So Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 is here, and as with all content after a larger update, there's things that have been added on the back end that point towards the future. This happens every season, and Season 3 is no different, so today we're taking a look at the leaks from Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 and everything that you need to know that came out of this update. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below, and make sure you drop a like and subscribe for more Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS coverage. I'd love to have you in the community. Also, make sure to follow over on TikTok as well as we get in the swing of things with the short form content, but anyways, let's take a look at the leaked items out of Season 3 and Modern Warfare 3. First, we gotta talk about disclaimers as we do with every single leak video. Number one, I unfortunately can't show any of the content on screen that has been leaked since it's still intellectual property of Activision, Sledgehammer, and any studio working on the product. Number two, the content seen today is a snapshot in time. All things could change, they could not. Whether it be timetables changing, items being cut or pushed back entirely, we don't know circumstances, but as for updates when these happen, it's a snapshot in time of development. So things could change, but we know of this right now. Number three, this content is sourced from the likes of Bob Network UK, Reality UK, Alex, Forward Leaks, Semtex Leaks, and COD Warfare Forum, all of whom are linked down there in the description below if you want to check out the original posts and, in some cases, even images of stuff that hasn't been DMCA just yet. But anyways, let's talk about the leaks themselves. Number one, let's talk about weaponry because we have a handful of weapons that were leaked here at this, including the Car 98K, the Spaz 12, a shovel melee, the PC9, and a weapon that's called the K Papa 50. Now, we'll touch on those first two here in a second, but the PC9 is an actual weapon that is possible, the other ones we've seen beforehand, but the PC9, this perhaps modeled after the Ruger PC9, which, if that's the case, it'd be rather interesting to see the design choice for the SMG category of play as designated by the game files. We'd love to see how that would compare and be balanced against the other SMGs of note, but beyond that, the K Papa 50 is another SMG that was found in the game files, and I'm assuming this is going to refer to the naming of the KP-50, because the way the naming of weapons usually works is the first letter, then the next letter, but in a phonetic alphabet form, and then followed by the number associated with it. So like the MP-5, for example, in the game files, it's the m Papa 5 So K-Papa 50 sounds like it'd be the KP-50, right? But I'd be curious what that one could be, because to my knowledge, there's no real firearm named the KP-50. And let's be real, most of the weapons in COD anymore aren't named after real weapons for whatever reason that may be. There's a bunch of different theories, but that's a different story for a different day. There's a K-50M, which is a Vietnamese submachine gun based on the PPSH, which could be possible, but with only three-fourths of that being an anagram form, that's not conclusive enough for me to be like, that's definitely what it's going to be. But five weapons here that we know of leaked out of Season 3's update and what could be coming in the future. But obviously, the lead of this weaponry story is the two fan favorites returning. The Spaz-12, great, another shotgun, fits perfectly with the classic Modern Warfare vibes, absolutely. But for me... I'm stoked to hear the Car 98K is coming back if this all holds up. My hope is that this is very similar in build and handling to the Modern Warfare 2019 Car 98K because man, oh man, that was my true Warzone love back in the day. Only ever matched by the Swiss K31. But the Car 98K, that thing was an absolute beast. It had handling, mobility, the lethal damage capability, if you were accurate, all that into one. If it returns, it has to be one shot, headshot potential in my opinion. I get hit markers to the limbs and chest, but headshot, it's gotta be that for the nostalgia. I wanna be able to relive my glory sniping days of Warzone and pull out a nice little jump shot or quick scope to get out of a situation, produce those like clip factor worthy gameplay moments again. But anyways, that is the weaponry that we know of. One thing to note is that it was recently mentioned of the EM-1 and the ASM-1, both additional weapons from Advanced Warfare. If you guys remember back to when we had our first initial leaks, Season 3 was surprisingly one of the weapon dumps that we had seen from the furthest points out. We knew of the Ball 27 and the Moors before we knew of anything like the XRK Stalker, Ram 7, HRM 9, and other weapons from Season 1 and 2. But when we first heard about these, the EM-1 and the ASM-1 were also on the table, having players believe we'd see a full Advanced Warfare theme, which would be cool, and to some degree we have like patches of one, but the EM-1 and the ASM-1 look to be cut entirely, which does happen quite a bit. I mean, I'm kind of surprised we actually haven't seen it more recently in COD. The most recent I can think of are those assets that pointed to the All-American Heroes crossover with the likes of Indiana Jones and such in Vanguard, but beyond that, we haven't really seen too many things that were heavily mentioned, heavily publicized, that just didn't ever release, but it seems like those two are the newest victims to the cutting room floor. Now, beyond that, we ended up learning about a couple of other things. We saw maps in the game files where there's one that is the Get High Parkour Gameplay Course. This apparently going to be a part of the 420 LTM here at this, but it's actually really interesting 
interesting in what this is. It's like a race course of sorts, but for parkour in how this will work out. So nothing in relation to like weaponry and gunplay. The other like completely off the wall thing that I can recall is like the ATV mode in Warzone. You don't use weapons at all here for this. It's instead kind of like that game only up if you remember that. But in that sense, think of it as COD, but with an 80s synth wave theme and digital aesthetic and a COD parkour course. That's essentially what we got. And honestly, from the gameplay that has been seen, it looks kind of fun. It looks like it'll be something that's enjoyable to play around with, but it's going to be a niche thing for sure. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to never touch it. So it's one of those things. We also learned about a new war map on the future horizon called Fusion, apparently, which it wouldn't surprise me if this is a season four thing. Right now, it seems like they're on pace for launch season two, season four and season six updates for war. My only hope, because it's the last information we have about maps coming out of this update in particular, I'm sure there's going to be more seen out of the season three reloaded update, but my only hope is that we get some love for ground war in season four. Please, for the love of God, please. Anyways, camos are the next thing up on deck here. We saw, as usual, a new handful of different camos introduced in this update. Now, there are a few that are accounted for, some that, while you might not see them or go for them directly, they were added with this update. Those things being like the engine lights on camo, which is the rebirth nuke camo. The nuking hazard camo is the Urzikstan nuke camo. There's a monster energy camo texture as well, which is weird, so it seems like there might be a continuation of that promotion coming, but we'll see how that works out. But other things include the heavy metal camo, which is going to be coming as of tomorrow, it seems like, with the Kong vs. Godzilla event. There's the camo Welcome to the Mainframe, which my assumption that would have been the Vortex event camo coming mid-season, but that actually is the Binary Morality camo. So we might see two associated with that. There's the Cheetah Print camo, and there's also the Lots of Molecules camo coming alongside that, but also no real details for those last couple. We have the Operators of Void and Hammer. There's going to be the new modes of Exposed, which is apparently going to be, as described in the game files, a camper's nightmare, where it's basically your visibility items are always on. Enemies will be highlighted when in sight, radar always on, stuff like that. So kind of like an experimental playlist, but turned into an LTM. There's the High Trip playlist, where it's going to be in Versurgence and Core Battle Royale, perhaps, where there's four different power-up gummies. So similar to how we had the power-ups for the zombie stuff in Fortune's Keep, that's going to be coming over where it's going to, air quote, heighten your senses. You have to collect gummies to sharpen your senses and smoke out the competition. That obviously coming along with the 420 event. Apparently, there's in the game files a 9v9 war playlist coming, which is pretty cool. I think that would be a lot of fun to play on. And a bare bones mosh pit is apparently in the game files as well. No kill streaks, perks, or field upgrades, just straight up gunplay. And that is the leaks we learned about here out of this update for season three. Grand scheme of things, there's not a whole ton by comparison to what we've seen in past updates, but still a decent bit, no less. I'm again expecting more stuff will come out of this in the future with season three reloaded on May 1st. But also, we're starting to get to that point of the year where it's not a whole ton of big items remaining in the grand scheme and the big picture of the year. I mean, if you think about it, you have stuff like Fortune's Keep and Rebirth Island. We knew those were going to coming, but both are now out of the way. Warzone doesn't really have any big known things remaining except for maybe big map ranked play, which at this point, I feel like at the earliest is going to be season four or later. I don't see that coming in season three reloaded. And beyond that, on the Warzone front, you might have an event for the reveal of Golf War upcoming season six is likely going to be that Halloween event again, but like not a whole ton on the horizon besides that, that we should be expecting that we could be seeing leak out at this point. Modern Warfare 3 as a multiplayer experience is a bit of an anomaly. We don't have a ton in regards to big items to expect for the rest of the year, because honestly, MP's kind of been severely neglected since Cold War with the priority shifting to Warzone, but honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised with multiplayer content that we've seen to date with the amount of original maps per season thus far the reskins in the Vortex maps and the most recent remasters and repurposed areas for Season 3 here. It's been more than I was anticipating in regards to content coming compared to prior years, so I'm cool with that. Not to mention Sledge is still adding in innovative or valuable items in the way of things like aftermarket parts, and honestly, I'm loving what they did with Season 3 in the regards to five perks, three vests, and two gear items. Like, to see a massive gameplay-changing content dump like that isn't something that we usually see. Not just, like, maps and weaponry, but, like, stuff that actually alters the gameplay itself. So, what the future holds, who knows? We might now start to see stuff slightly die down a little bit. I'm hoping not. I'd love to be proven wrong on that. And we see a build-up for Golf War, plus also a continuation of awesome stuff coming in the future. But, again, a decent bit of stuff has leaked, but not probably as much as prior updates. But anyways, 
that's we're gonna wrap it up that's the stuff we saw come out of season three but before we call this video want to make sure again check out my friends over at gamer advantage i firmly believe that they're the best blue light glasses on the market i've worked with these guys for three years now at this point and cannot recommend them enough they're the most lightweight comfortable and durable frames out there as far as i've used and i definitely think they've helped my daily productivity I think they can help you out too. In full transparency, they are a bit more of an investment, but I do think your vision's absolutely worth investing into. If you're like me, you're looking at a monitor, phone, or gaming for a good chunk of the day, these can absolutely help you out. If you guys would like to learn more, at the very least, I'd recommend checking out their website where they can better break down the science and all the specifics way better than I could, but what I can personally say is that I'd highly recommend them. So if you guys would like to learn more, check the link in the description below. And if you'd like to pick something up for yourself, use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. Let me know your thoughts down below. Like anything out of these leaks, dislike it, whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. We're getting all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS content here upcoming. I'd love to have you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modern Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.